You're at Aaron and Cleo's wedding. Here's Aaron standing alone. Which of these ladies is his wife to be? It's this one. Look, there's her name, Cleo, on her bracelet. Three girls are fighting over a doll. It belongs to one of them, but each of the three says it's hers. Who do you think the real owner of the doll is? It must be this girl. Look, she and the doll have matching outfits. It's Halloween and some people got dressed as ghosts, but there's one real ghost among them. Who do you think it is? Look, this person doesn't cast a shadow. Three friends went camping. Two of them are real people and one is a robot. Take a closer look at the photo of them and tell me who you think the robot is. It must be this guy. Take a look at the footprints each of them left. This guy's footprints are actually wheel prints, which is not very common for a real human. Amanda and her mom are participating in a game show. It's the final round, and Amanda's task is to figure out which of these two women is her mom. Both women are wearing masks, so Amanda cannot see their faces. Can you help her? Pay attention to the woman's hair color. Amanda is redheaded. This woman has red hair too, so I'd bet it's her mom. In any case, Amanda must know what color her mom's hair is, so she's safe here. Local police got information that their little town had been invaded. Officers started walking around asking for people's ID cards. I'll show them to you one by one, and you must decide who looks suspicious. For example, this one. What's your verdict? Look at this guy's birth year. No, it's definitely not a real ID. Here's another one. What can you say about this lady? Look at her place of residence. It's just the name of some place. There's no mention of a state or country. Nope, this person is suspicious too. The next person is this young lady, and here's her ID card. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine to me. I'd let her go. Another one. What about this person? This time, pay attention to this photo. All document photos should have a white background. This one isn't an officially issued ID card, so I'd say he's suspicious. I have the last suspect for you. What do you say? Is there anything we should be concerned about? No, he's okay. Let him go. A rich lady, Mrs. Reed, was looking for a person to clean her house every week. She invited three candidates and asked them why they wanted the job. Amelia said she wanted to earn some money during the summer to travel to another state with her friends. Colton said his mother forced him to do something in the summer so that he didn't play video games all day long. Danica said she was totally broke and needed money to survive. When they left, Mrs. Reed saw that her diamond necklace was missing. She guessed that one of the candidates had stolen it, so she invited them again. Take a look at them and figure out who the thief is. It's Danica. She said she was broke. The last time she was there, she was wearing old clothes. 
But look at her now. She has new clothes, gold earrings, and an iPhone. She must have stolen the necklace and sold it. On a snowy winter day, police got a call that one of the houses in the neighborhood had been robbed. A detective visited people living there, but everyone said that they'd been staying at home because of the weather. Still, the detective understood who was lying. This person became the main suspect. Who is it? It must be the person living in this house. He said he'd been staying at home, but he obviously parked his car after the snow had already built up on the driveway. So, the car was away for a while. Why would he lie? Another day, another crime. Mr. Spencer, a businessman, was robbed. He said he'd had a heavy safe full of cash in his bedroom. Now it was gone, and he was worried that he didn't have any proof that he'd ever possessed it. Still, a detective said that he believed the man and asked for details. How did the detective know the businessman wasn't a liar? Look, there's dance on the floor. Something really heavy was indeed standing there for a long time. Rebecca works in a large international company. One day, she comes back to the office from lunch and finds her colleagues extremely agitated. Oh, they hurry to tell the girl that someone knocked their HR manager out just an hour ago. The police have three suspects. Laura is an applicant. She says she was a bit angry with the HR manager. After all, he made her wait for ages, well past the time of her appointment. She stayed outside in the rain and probably caught a cold. And still, Laura says, I would never hit him. Plus, I'm too weak to do it. Gary, who works in the marketing department, claims he hasn't seen the HR manager since he arrived at work. He was having a meeting from the very morning till lunchtime. Jacob, from Research and Development, tells the police he rode his bike to a coffee shop to get his cappuccino. He's just come back. Who knocked the HR manager out? It was Jacob. Both his bike and his clothes are dry and clean. How is it possible if it's raining outside? Jack is participating in a challenge. He's got to the last stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. Jack needs to get a key out of one of the four pots. On top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with the sand and get the key. Jacob is the owner of a small IT company. Larry is his subordinate, exceptionally talented, and just as forgetful. More often than not, he seems to be lost in his head. Such things as going on a trip out of the blue without notifying anybody is typical for this genius. Normally, the boss turns a blind eye to Larry's quirks. But this time, an important business meeting is about to start. Jacob needs the data Larry has been working on. But the guy is nowhere to be found. He doesn't answer his phone, so no one can reach him. One hour before the meeting has to begin, Jacob can't wait any longer. He switches on Larry's computer, but it's password locked. The man tries some random combination of letters and numbers, but of course, it's wrong. Suddenly, a tiny window appears on the screen. In this window, Jacob sees what seems to be a riddle. Little, little, late, late. After puzzling over it for a while, the man types something in the window and sees the home screen. The computer is unlocked! What has Jacob written? The answer to this rebus is too little, too late. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. 
the folder with the needed data is also protected by a password. When Jacob clicks on it, that's what he sees. Write backward all the numbers. Hmm, sounds like a tough task. Luckily, Jacob knows how Larry's brain works. He doesn't need much information to write the correct answer and, finally, get the information. What is the password? And there you have it! That's the phrase, all the numbers written backward. Camilla was terrified of dogs. One day she was jogging in the park and noticed a large dog sitting near the bench. It looked unfriendly. Uh The leash attached to the dog's collar was three feet long. Camilla decided it would be safe to pass by if there was at least seven feet of space between her and the pooch. But even being on a leash, the dog still managed to bite her. How come? Sadly, the leash wasn't tied to anything. David's company develops new apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of applicants, but has chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old. I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have 4 years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with 7 years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps. He's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can hire only one person. But it's okay because only one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just 7 years of work experience, but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela. Even though she hasn't been working that long, she's honest and has a nice portfolio. Kevin, a security guard in an amusement park, finds a boy standing near a roller coaster. The kid says his name's Nick. He doesn't know where his dad is. Kevin takes Nick to his office and makes an announcement. Soon after that, two men show up at the door. The first exclaims, We were in a cafe, but after eating my burger, I felt so sick, I had to spend almost 20 minutes in the bathroom. When I got out, Nick wasn't around. I was so worried. The other man interrupts him. We rode a roller coaster together. Then I told Nick to wait there and went to get us some hot dogs. Which man is Nick's father? Nick is too small to ride the roller coaster, which means the second man is lying. The boy's dad is the unlucky guy with food poisoning. Aiden fell madly in love with a beautiful girl, Ella. He tried to spend all his time with her. The man bought her expensive presents and flowers, invited her to the best restaurants, organized yacht trips. They traveled the world, stayed in famous hotels, and went shopping for designer clothes. In less than a year, Aiden became a millionaire. How is it possible? Well, before meeting Ella, the guy was a billionaire. Carter had a fast and successfully developing company until his main investor went bankrupt. Carter was desperate. He went to visit his best friend Justin, a coffee shop owner. Cheer up, Justin exclaimed. One rich businessman visits my cafe almost every day. He's here today, too. He's very mysterious and doesn't have any social media accounts. Few people know about his wealth, but I do. Go and introduce yourself. Justin pointed toward the back of the coffee shop. Carter went there and saw three men. Uh Uh-oh. He hadn't asked his friend which one was the wealthy entrepreneur. He looked at the men attentively. In no time he figured out who was the one he needed. (laughs) 
It isn't the guy in the middle. He has a $1 store bag. The one on the right could be rich, but he's recording an Instagram story. And the businessman isn't active on any social media. This means the man Carter needs is on the left. Michael was walking along the street when a sealed envelope landed near his feet. The guy picked it up. Inside, there was a key and a note. It said, help, 323. Michael entered the building. Soon, he found a door number 323 and used the key to open it. He saw a man near the open window. He was gagged and tied to a chair. Once free, the man exclaimed, Two men broke into my office, tied me up, and took all the money from my safe. Luckily, my hands were free. I managed to write this note and throw it together with the key out the window. Michael didn't believe the man and called the police. Why? The envelope was sealed. How could the man do it if he was gagged? It can never be thrown, but it can be caught. People are always looking for ways to lose it. What is it? It's a cold. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of the teams scored two goals in total. And still, it wasn't a tie. One team won, and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Young but very popular blogger Eric wrote his first book. It was a huge success. The guy was preparing for his first book signing. He was very excited and nervous. So he took a break to steady his nerves in a quiet corner. But even at 6 p.m., when the meeting was supposed to start, Eric was nowhere to be seen. In 10 minutes, a security guard found him lying on the floor in the bathroom. Someone had hit the writer on the head. The police had three suspects. Angela, his agent, said she had been solving some urgent organizational issues. Frank, one of the fans, said he had been a great lover of Eric's books for years. He wouldn't do anything to harm the writer. And Patrick, the security guard, said he had been doing his job, keeping the fans away from the entrance. Who hit Eric? It was Frank. It was Eric's first book. Frank couldn't possibly be reading his books for years. Look at these guys carefully. Who is a fake fireman? It's the guy on the right. He's not wearing a helmet and doesn't have a special bag. Plus, his pants aren't part of the uniform. You have three empty cups and ten sugar cubes. You need to distribute these sugar cubes between the cups so that each of them contains an odd number of cubes. Put three sugar cubes in the first cup and three cubes in the second one. After that, put the remaining four cubes and the second cup in cup number three. Now, the first cup has three sugar cubes, and the second one has three sugar cubes too. As for the third cup, it has seven sugar cubes, four of its own and three in the second cup. Two roommates, Deborah and Rachel, were walking home after doing their weekly grocery shopping. Deborah kept complaining about how heavy her bags were. Then Rachel told her, I don't understand why you're upset. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice more bags than you do. And if I gave you one of mine, we would have the same number of bags. How many bags were the girls carrying? Rachel had seven bags, while Deborah was only carrying five bags. Detective Black's assistant, Josh, was late for work. When he arrived, he told his boss the following story. I was driving along the highway when I saw an unconscious man lying on the left side of the road. I picked him up and took him to the nearest hospital. Finally, he came to his senses. He told me he had been pushed out of the moving vehicle. The bag and all of his money and documents were left inside. But Detective Black said the man was lying. How did he figure it out?
If the man had indeed been pushed out of the car, he would have been lying on the right side of the road, not the left one. Kenneth was starving. He found a nice diner that served burgers and bought one. After a waiter brought him his order, Kenneth went to the bathroom to wash his hands. But when he came back, his burger was gone. The guy looked around the diner and understood who had taken his lunch. Can you figure it out? It's the young woman with a dog sitting at her feet and sniffing the air. If she was just drinking coffee, which is what she's pretending to do, the dog wouldn't be so interested in her. Mary was walking through the park when she spotted a hungry dog. The woman decided to share her snack with the animal. Unfortunately, there was a stream between her and the pooch. She squatted down to attract the dog's attention and showed it the food. The animal was next to her in no time. There was no bridge over the stream, and still, the dog wasn't wet. How is it possible? It happened in the winter, and the stream was frozen. Emily's won the lottery, and now she can choose her prize. There are three options. A brand new Ferrari, a Gucci handbag, and Jimmy Choo shoes. Take a closer look at them and tell which prize she should choose. Emily should choose the handbag. The logos of Ferrari and Jimmy Choo are wrong, so the car and the shoes must be fake. Esme got lost in the forest. Again! This time, it didn't take her long to find at least the old witch's house. She petted the cat and asked if the witch could help her get out of the forest. Again! The witch agreed, but on one condition. Esme had to solve her riddle. If she succeeded, the witch would send her home, and if she failed, Esme would stay with the witch and the cat forever. Esme had to agree. The witch gave her three sticks and asked her to turn them into six without breaking any. Esme managed to do the task. How? Three sticks are exactly enough to make the Roman six out of them like this. Take a look at these two women going to the opera. Can you tell which one of them is a model of a popular brand? Both women have Louis Vuitton bags, but take a closer look at the logos. The logo on the right is wrong, so the bag must be fake. It means that the woman on the left is the face of the brand. The Millers and the Johnsons are going on a vacation. Can you tell which family has a daughter? Take a closer look at their suitcases. The Millers have two suitcases, but the Johnsons have three. The extra one must be their daughter's, who's probably just left for a while. Let's move to Norway. After the Christmas break, Two twin sisters, Alicia and Ada, came to visit their mother. However, one of the sisters has a boyfriend from Thailand who she visited right before her mother. Can you tell which one? Norway is a cold country in the north. Also, it's winter. But unlike her twin sister, Ada is tanned. It's probably because she just spent her vacation in some warm country, like Thailand, at her boyfriend's place. So it must be her. A chemist has discovered a new element. Three days later, he suddenly disappeared. Ben, his intern, is supposed to finish the scientist's work. However, all the data is on the chemist's computer, and Ben doesn't know the passcode. He only knows that the passcode is his daughter's name, which the scientist has never mentioned. Luckily, there's a hint. Can you guess the daughter's name? Her father is a chemist, so the key must be something related to chemistry. How about the periodic table? The ninth element is fluorine, which is F. The 53rd element is iodine, and that's I. Then there's 8, which is oxygen, or O. 
And the 11th element is sodium, which is Na. So the daughter's name is Fiona, and that's the password. Mr. and Mrs. Murphy are having a walk in a park with three girls, Adeline, Kaylee, and Sienna. Two of them are their nieces, and the other one is their daughter. Can you tell which girl is the daughter? Their daughter is Adeline. Look, both Mr. and Mrs. Murphy have blue eyes. It means that their daughter can only have blue eyes too. Adeline is the only girl with blue eyes. Three girls, May, Reagan, and Tessa, came to a private party and said that they're world-famous top models. However, two of them lied. Can you guess which one of them told the truth and is really a famous top model? She must be wearing a real designer purse, not a copy. Look, the logos of Reagan and Tessa's Dolce & Gabbana purses are wrong, so these girls must be lying. It seems like the real model is May. Gabrielle noticed a beautiful woman in a park and came up to meet her. They talked for hours and, among other things, he learned that she's a music teacher, has three siblings and a niece. Gabriel asked her out on a date, but the woman said she'd only agree if he guessed the name of her niece. Gabriel says it's impossible and asks for a hint. The woman said just two words, three, six. Can you help Gabriel guess the name? Remember, she's a music teacher, so it must be somehow connected to music. Let's recall the musical notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. The third one is mi, and the sixth one is la. If we put them together, we get Mila. That must be the woman's niece's name. Voila! It's date night! At the end of a school break, Elle returned to her class to find a short love note on her desk. She looked around to see who it could be from, but she couldn't tell. Still, she had three suspects. The students who'd always been especially nice to her. She asked them directly if they wrote her a note. Martin said he had been busy finishing his homework. Owen said he had been scrolling through his social media feed and hadn't written any notes. Leanna denied writing a note too and said that she had been in the bathroom. However, Elle still guessed who wrote the note. Can you? Look, Leanna's hands are covered in ink. If she really was in the bathroom, her hands would be clean. So, she must be lying, and she must be the one who wrote that note. Hey, don't be shy! After a summer break, all students returned to school. Four friends started to talk about what they had been doing all summer. It turned out that all of them had been traveling. Addison said she and her family had taken a trip to Moldova to visit her grandma. Ash said he and his girlfriend had spent the whole two months in Venezuela. Joshua said he'd visited Narnia and Kira had been to several Asian countries. However, one of the friends actually stayed at home the whole time. Can you tell who? It's Joshua. Narnia is a fictional country. He probably had a movie marathon that summer. Dan found himself in a dark dungeon and couldn't remember what happened. But he didn't mind, because right in front of him, there were three chests. One of them was full of gold coins, another was full of silver coins, and the third one was full of diamonds. He could take any one of the chests with him. However, outside, there was a vampire waiting for him. What should Dan do? Dan should take the chest with the silver coins. Vampires are afraid of silver, so he'd be able to walk past the vampire. ka -ching. What's wrong with this picture? They're playing basketball with a soccer ball. Luke fell from his bicycle and lost his memory. Look at the picture attentively and help Luke figure out who his real father is. Oh, 
Although Luke has the same hairstyle as the second man and the same outfit as the first man, his real father is the third guy. They have similar hair color and freckles. Who doesn't work as an art teacher? The first lady has paint on her outfit. The second one is wearing cute handmade bracelets and carries a big bag of art supplies. The third woman is wearing high heels and a white coat. And a fourth lady is wearing sneakers and a hairband. The third woman has nothing to do with art. If you look closely, you'll see that her white coat is a medical gown. Jake and Sarah are chilling at a luxury resort after an exhausting business conference. But something is wrong. What is it? The water in the pool is frozen. And what's wrong with this picture? Unlike her reflection, the woman isn't actually wearing any necklace. Let's check what your magic power is. Don't forget to keep track of your points. A. What's your favorite time of the day? Morning, evening, night, afternoon? I can't choose. B. What superpower would you rather have? Teleportation, super speed, telepathy, super strength, x-ray vision. C. Congratulations, you've got it now. But with great power comes great responsibility. How will you use it? Marry my crush, rule the planet, get rich, Become a hermit in the desert. Save people. D. How do you get along with other people? I'm respectful and neutral. I can't imagine my life without my friends. I dislike other people. I'm slightly introverted. I enjoy the company of other people. E. What's your favorite color? Black, red, blue, yellow, purple. F. A magician needs a crystal. Pick the one you like most. Red ruby, purple amethyst, white diamond, rainbow opal, black agate. G. What's your source of inspiration? Love, competition, art, nature, games. H. Which one is about you? I want to be popular. I'm pretty smart. I stay away from drama. I want everyone to be happy. I'll do anything to win. Now count your points and find out your magic power. 8 to 14 points, telekinesis, the ability to move and manipulate objects. 15 to 20 points, the magic of elements, you can control fire, water, air, and earth. 21 to 26 points. Love magic. You have the ability to create perfectly matching couples. 27 to 33. Hypnosis. You can create very convincing illusions. 34 to 40. Healing. Your energy heals bodies and hearts. Look at the picture attentively. 
Can you see a car that came from a different time? Right, here it is. Look at the picture. What do you think is happening? Who is lying? If you chose option A, you're probably a very independent person. You prefer not to ask others for help even when you need it. And if you opted for option B, your family is the most important thing for you. You choose to care for others even if they're wrong. Gemma went to a restaurant with her fiancé, Mike. Soon after they finished a delicious meal, Mike felt sick. Gemma called the ambulance and police. The detective interrogated the restaurant staff. The waiter said that she hadn't touched the food. She just took the order and passed it to the chef. The dishwasher said she always washed the dishes thoroughly with high-quality soap. The chef said that he had prepared the meal according to the order. Who is lying? The chef. Take a look at his locker and his tattoo. He is Gemma's ex-boyfriend. He poisoned Mike out of jealousy. Will worked at a coffee shop. One day, his wife, Diana, came over to visit him. Which of the customers is his real wife? Will is married to the woman on the right. They have similar tattoos on their necks. Other girls are random customers who just happen to have the same name. Greg and his daughter Mia went for a walk after spending a year apart. Look at these six people very closely. Which couple is the father and daughter? Right you are! Mad scientist Fred accidentally revived a mummy. His creature escaped from the museum. Following the mummy, Fred ran to the park. Look at this image. Can you help Fred find the mummy? It's over there, behind the ice cream stand. George dreams of being in a relationship, so he's downloaded a dating app. Three girls have caught his attention. Lily is an artist who loves cooking and traveling. She has a cute cat. Jane is a yoga teacher and vegan enthusiast. She's afraid of heights and loves old movies. Nancy is a teacher. She loves reading and dancing and often goes hiking with friends. Which profile is fake? It's Jane's profile. If she's afraid of heights, why is she sitting on the roof in one of her pictures? Okay, listen to me very carefully, my friend. Here's the deal. First, to steal the diamond, you need to get to a remote island. It doesn't exist on any map, and it's forbidden for ordinary people to be there. The diamond is in the heart of this place, inside a well-guarded deep underground bunker. It's impossible to get there through the main entrance. But lucky you, there's also a secret jail on the island. You can get there as a prisoner and then escape through the underground tunnel. That tunnel will lead you into the bunker. Then you should find the diamond. You'll have very little time for the whole operation. When you're done, a boat will be waiting for you in the southern part of the island. Do everything correctly and follow the plan, and then you'll encounter no problems. Got it? All right, let's go. You and other prisoners get into a helicopter and fly to the island. You're handcuffed. At one moment, the helicopter begins to shake. The pilot says you're falling. He puts on a parachute and jumps out of the helicopter. Take a look around and decide what to do next. Faster! You see the keys to your handcuffs hanging near the cabin. Then you get rid of the handcuffs. The prisoners ask you to release them too. But be careful, these people are dangerous. All three of them say they know how to fly a helicopter. Who will you believe? That guy with a tattoo with a helicopter on his leg. Maybe he's a good pilot. 
you remove his handcuffs and he admits he has lied. None of these people knows how to fly a helicopter. There's only one parachute left. The prisoner pushes you to the side, grabs the parachute, and jumps out of the falling helicopter. You decide to release the other prisoners too. What will you do next? Jump without a parachute? Try to land the helicopter on your own? The helicopter's pilot abandoned the vehicle because the landing was impossible. So you will not succeed either. You need to jump. You have been flying over the ocean, remember? Also, the helicopter is falling, so the height isn't that great. You jump into the water and swim toward the shore. Suddenly, you notice a shark's fin. It's quickly approaching you. What are you going to do? A. Try to swim to the shore as fast as possible. B. Don't swim anywhere and just float in the water. C. Dive and start waving your hands to scare the shark away. You need to stop. If you start swimming away, the shark will begin chasing you. Breathe in a lot of air and try not to make unnecessary movements. The shark will leave soon. But if it attacks, you'll have to attack back. Its gills and eyes are the animal's weak spots. Fortunately, the shark doesn't charge at you. It swims away, and you get to the shore safely. The island's guards are running out of the jungle. One of the prisoners who was with you in the helicopter is hiding in the bushes and invites you to join him. Where will you go? Let the guards catch you and take you to jail. Don't forget about your mission. They dress you in a yellow shirt and lead you away. You see many dangerous people. You're sitting at the table having lunch. There are three prisoners in front of you. One of them is going to escape. But who? That man with a book. A metal file serves him as a bookmark. Today, he will also try to escape. The underground tunnel leading from the prison to the bunker is located under the laundry room. You need to get out of your cell and get there. To do this, you have to get the metal file and pick the lock. Everyone goes out into the courtyard for a walk. You're following the man with the book. He sits down on the bench and hides the book under the seat. You need to distract him and get your hands on the book. You can use a basketball, dumbbells, or playing cards. What will you do? You can offer to work out with the dumbbells or play cards, but it will be difficult for you to get out of his sight. Start playing basketball. Throw the ball far away. The prisoner will run after it. Meanwhile, you'll take the book. So you grab the book but find no file inside. Instead of this, you find some money. It seems this guy has sold the tool to one of the other prisoners. You put the money in your pocket and look around the yard. Which of the prisoners can have the metal file? That guy is pressing his fingers to the sleeve of his shirt. Apparently, he's hiding the tool there. You're about to approach him, but one of the prisoners starts a fight. The guards are trying to prevent a riot. In all this chaos, someone hits you on the head and you lose consciousness. You wake up in a hospital ward. Oh no! You have almost no time left. The doors are locked. Several security guards are walking around. How can you get into the laundry room? In the corner, there's a huge cart with dirty laundry. Hide in there, and they'll take you to where you need to go. You hide among the dirty sheets. The cleaner takes the cart and transports you to the laundry room. He throws the linen into the washing machine and notices you. The cleaner is going to scream and call the guards. What will you do? You have some money, remember? You can pay for his silence. You move one of the washing machines and find a hatch under it. You climb inside and walk through the tunnel. It's very cold, wet, and dark here. 
Finally, you reach a small room. There are no windows and doors, only brick walls. What will you do? You can't go back. Among all these bricks, there's one sticking out of the wall. Try to push it. It worked! A secret door opens, and you step inside. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.